Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to this new Sunday that God has given us, this new week that we start out this way. Let us join our hearts and minds and let's be at peace and let us know that this space we are welcome in. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this gathering. Lord, help our spirits to settle into this sacred space during this sacred time. Open our hearts and minds to the possibilities of what can be and not to the world's ways. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning to everyone who worships with us this morning. There is coffee after church in Fellowship Hall, along with the remnants of our bake sale. Not much, but enough to share. What a blessed and wonderful day we had for our centennial. A wonderful, a wonderful way to share together and be in fellowship. It was awesome. Also, um, this is the Sunday, on Communion Sunday, we normally have our collection for the uh, Diaconate Fund, a fund which serves members of our church family who may be in trouble and need financial aid. There are envelopes in the pew racks, and if not, there should be some up back near the offering box, and you can put them in at any time. Also, um, if you are interested in participating in next week's lay-led service, um, you could see Reverend uh, Pastor Dave or Bob Cordell after service. Thanks. Are there any other? I know Ken probably has one. Oops. Hi. I know. I got an announcement. Oh. It's okay? Yeah, it's okay. All right. I just want to get mine out of the way because Ken has to do it. I thought like, oh, you have an announcement? Yes, I do. Um, I want to talk to everybody very briefly about COVID, okay? We're not done with it by any way, shape, or means. The CDC's guidelines are changing a little bit, but we still have to sensitive, we still have to be aware. As everyone or most of folks know, I had COVID two weeks ago. And thankfully, neither D or I are in the hospital. We both are recovering perfectly fine. I'm back to almost normal, so which means we're in trouble. Um, but the rest, the B still has a cough. Current CDC guidelines are stating that if you are test positive for COVID, isolate for five days. Mm -hmm. The possibility of checking, of testing positive after you are over it is on the increase. This is not negative. What the CDC is asking you to do at this time is that if you're testing positive, isolate for five days. And then wear a mask for five days, okay? If we can follow those guidelines, folks, we can keep this stuff out of our building. And it's very, very important with our population. We have to be sensitive to one another, please. So if you're not feeling good, know that we love you, know that we're gonna miss you, but stay home, please. <laughs> and when you're back up and you're back around, Throw one of these on for five days. It's not comfortable. I don't like it. I wore it all day yesterday on the common. It was good. But it ha just has to be done. So take care of one another. Follow the guidelines as well as you can and be sensitive, okay? Thank you. That's all I have to say about COVID. Can't? <laughs> Oops. 
Morning, everyone. Morning, Ken. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. We we certainly we certainly have a lot to be blessed for with uh, our centennial celebration yesterday. God gave us a beautiful day, and uh, the community supported it. That's fantastic. Many thanks to the church, uh, the the uh, centennial committee, <coughs> and. Uh, so make sure I don't miss anybody here, but uh, Pat and Shirley for their food, and Jennifer for crafts, and Susie for all her silent auction, Nicole with the uh, gift baskets, and Kathy and Lorraine for their face painting. That was great to see. Ashtray Baked Goods, and Pastor Dave and Catherine Hollis and Joe for all the advertising. <coughs> all the people vo volunteered tents. We ended up with eight tents, so we were great. <coughs> And uh, Nancy uh, running around with, with the vendors, setting that up in the map, and, and Chris was, was great, a lot of help there. Music was outstanding. Lot, lots of great comments. Nice to meet, chat, and listen to all of them. And uh, I relaxed in a chair, listening and looking, looking out over the gazebo up at the beautiful blue sky. That was a, that was a really great time. So uh, I was out, I, when I was sitting at home, and everybody knows in 1922 was when the church uh, combined, and uh, what, I, what I did was I Googled what happened in Sturbridge in 1922. There was a big history of the, of the town and all what happened with the different churches and how, I, how they got together, but there's a lot of history there, what happened before, which was... Truly amazing. Our forefathers would have been very proud of the 100th centennial celebration. Thank everybody for all you did to make it successful. The, the results were very good between all the different groups, gift certificates, gift baskets, donations, koinonia, baked goods, food table, the Gift certificates was $1,100. Gift baskets, $266. Donations, $56. Quinonia, $300. Baked goods, $390. Food, ta food table, $798. Antiques, $375. So the total is like $3,368. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome. Thank you, Ken. Thanks for the Next year, we have a smaller celebration. <laughs> if, if you have not um, picked up a communion box, you can get one up back on the table. Um, if there are no more announcements, would you stand please and join me in the call to worship? Come my sisters and brothers, we are invited to join the gathering. Where shall we meet? At Christ's table. The opening hymn is How Great Thou Art, number 33.
Amen. Would you be seated, please, and join me in the prayer of confession. Merciful God, I place myself here before you humbly and in great hope. Lord, you know what I have done and what I've left undone, and I seek your forgiveness for all my transgressions. In this holy silence, I place all that I am before you on this day and pray for your help in becoming more. Children of God, hear the good news. God hears the sorrows that sit on our hearts and knows that Christ, that through Christ, we are forgiven. Praise God. Amen. The reading today is Hebrews 11, 29 through 12, 2. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if by dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would tell me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were torches, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death, they were sawn in two, they were killed by the sword, they went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commented for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that 
was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning will be from the Gospel of, gospel of Luke, chapters 49 through 56. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have, been, I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it's completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to, to the earth? No. I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, Mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a crowd, a cloud rising to the west, you immediately say, it's going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky, but you do not know how to interpret the present time. So ends our reading this morning. May these readings inspire our hearts and minds and lead us into our world in a better frame in the light of God and Christ shining through us. Amen. Okay, if you haven't noticed yet, the bulletin has a couple mistakes. <laughs> yep. That's due to me and having COVID brain. <laughs> it wasn't functioning very well. So if you notice, a big part is missing that says, oh, there's no sermon today? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> you think we had these beautiful readings and we're not going to talk about them a little bit? <laughs> now nah, we're going to talk about it a little bit. So let's all take a deep breath. Ah, and relax. The heat's over. It would crack me up, though, because the heat's over, and it's like as soon as the heat went down, the allergy alert went off this morning on my phone and went, zoom, right back up. So it's like, really? Come on, dude. Give, you know, a little bit of a break. But it's beautiful today. It was a beautiful day yesterday. Our work is definitely being shined upon. And the Holy Spirit, no matter where we are going, is present and amongst us. And what a joy it is. For none of us really know how anything is going to turn out until we do it. I'm pretty sure that Ken was a little nervous yesterday. You know, is anybody going to show what's going to happen? I'm pretty sure that Jim was a little bit on edge. All the hard work that that gentleman had done for this church in the last... Five months, Jim? Yeah, Jim even lost track of how many months it was. But he sat there and he led this group of people with kindness, with love, and with once in a while, just the way that Jesus did, with a little bit of tough love. Because, hey, we're like cats, you know? Put us all into a room and try to get us all to go one way. Meow, But Jim stuck with it, with love, and that's the whole thing about it. Join me in prayer for one second, please. Loving God, we seek your presence to be amongst and upon us. Merciful one, we seek your help to pull ourselves away from the world and its ways. Lord, help us to see and hear what is said 
and what truths may lie beneath. Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds so that we may become more understanding of one another in the world. And Lord, May the words of my mouth and the reflections of our hearts reflect your love and peace for all of your children. And may our hearts and minds unite in love for you and your ways. Amen. This morning, Jesus had some tough love out there. His message was a little bit different. He's, tempting, he's attempting to wake us up and for us to understand that far too many people today still do not understand Jesus' true Messiahship. We don't understand the ways of God and we don't understand that God's ways are not easy and they never will be easy. And it is not the ways of the world that we, have to, that we want to follow in the trappings that will capture us. Spreading the good news in the world, especially a world full of corruption and evil, is not an easy task. It's going to cause disruption. It has to. You're teaching people and you're speaking a language that some just cannot understand. How does somebody understand that we are called to love God, we are called to love our neighbors as ourselves, when our world is trying to teach people I statements, that it's all about me, that it's all about those who win, those with the most toys win. What fallacies. As many of us that are sitting here in this congregation can attest today that we have discovered that this was lies and misleading to us from the beginning. What's truly important are our relationships with one another, with our family, with our neighbors, and our community. These are the gifts that we were given. You know, when we talk about the kingdom of God, and we talk about God's kingdom, most of the time we talk about reconciliation, we talk about peace, and we talk about justice. Very seldom does Jesus take a tough love stance in the gospel. But when he does, it's only to help us. It's not to reprimand us, it's not to put us down, it's just to help us to understand. We have to decide whose side that we're on in this battle that we're in. Because if you don't believe we're in a battle, take a look at our world and its state. Whose side are we on? Are we on God's side or are we on the world's side? If we want to work and be in the kingdom of God, and we have to understand, too, that our walk requires a lifetime commitment. Because some of the things that Christ taught us to do go against our human nature. It's a lifelong journey. It's an understanding that others come first. That I statements have no place in Jesus' teachings. It is we. It is us. There is no them, there is no I. We're supposed to be coming together. As I stated, it's a lifelong walk of humbling ourselves, of humbling ourselves before God and before one another, putting your interests, sorry, I'm speaking from me, to put your interest as a people before my own interest as an individual. It's a walk of learning and continued learning so that we get better at hearing our call on what we're called to and walking that call. 
It's a walk that requires discipline and responsibility. It's a walk that requires discipline and responsibility, folks. You see, it's Christianity, out of all the faith traditions that are in the world, is both a discipline, a faith journey, and a call to action all tied together. And that's what we're called to. And when we can, and when we do truly accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, our behaviors are going to change. Our relationships with one another are going to change. For if they don't, then you didn't. A true relationship with God affects the ways that we relate to our family, friends, and community. Because our commitment to Christ shapes, first of all, our values, how we see things. I remember when I was a child, we had a saying, your word is your bond. Do you remember that? I can, I'm watching heads go up and down. We were taught this as children. Your word is your bond. Yet today, we hear lies and we hear conniving and we accept it. Why do we accept untruths when truths are just as easy to accept? Our priorities are going to change when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Being here on a Sunday morning at 9.30 in the morning, getting up on a Sunday morning at 6 o'clock to start showering and getting ready is not easy. But you know something? When we, our priorities are straight, so is in our lives. When we begin our week and we're talking about Jesus, we're talking about God and the Holy Spirit, his presence in amongst us, it shapes our week to something new and different and better and more vibrant. Our goals change when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. It's no longer about stuff. Now it becomes more about relationship. It becomes more about, Chris, what can I do for you? How can I help you? Gunda, what's happening with you? Those are questions we need to ask one another. New England is a wonderful, you know, when we look at a lot of stuff. Oh, you know, I'm a private individual. Oh, cut it out. You're a lonely individual. Let us help one another. Let us carry one another. Let us have joy together. When our goals change and they become more directed at our community, faith community, and community at large. Look, if you're expecting to change the world, you're not. I'm not that good of a preacher. I'm not going to have 10,000 people in a congregation. We don't have a big enough house to hold 1,000, but we have a big enough house, and I'm a good enough pastor that we can make ripples. And maybe that's all we need to do is make ripples. I love this visual because every one of us in this room can relate to it. You walk up to a lake, and that lake is just like glass. We've all done it. There's no wind, there's no anything. And if you were a very fortunate child, maybe you stopped, you bent down, you picked up a rock, and you threw it in the water. That little pebble made a splash. And then the splash went away. But the ripples from it kept going and kept going and kept going. That's what our faith story is about. That's what our journey is about. That's what our church is about. 
It's not about changing the world. It's about changing the life of one individual for the better. Maybe it's about changing your life just a little bit for the better. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, our behaviors change. Do we understand? Loving one another is really cool. Loving one another and being community. What a saving grace that he gave us. Our behaviors change. We no longer are acting corruptly. We now have something that's so much more important that leads us to better behaviors where we're forced to change our old patterns. And these changes may cause significant changes in your relationships. You know, we have a choice. Which pathway do we follow? The world's pathway or God's pathway? I talked not too long ago about a friend of mine that passed away when he was very young and about the wealth that he had standing on those sidewalks, about the fact that the funeral home was thought they were ending the service at, let's say, 7 o'clock in the afternoon or evening. And at 9 o'clock in the evening, there was still a line on the sidewalk waiting to come in and honor this man. That is a life well lived. See, you can't take everything that you got. The Egyptians have tried it. And Howard broke into King Tut's tomb when we found all his stuff. So it didn't work for him. What makes it think it's going to work for us? We're not taking our houses. We're not taking our cars. We're not taking any of that. But you know something? Glenna, I can take your love with me. I can take that love. And I can leave you my love. And those are the gifts that God gave us to share. Paul reminds us about our faith. First, he takes it from an educational standpoint. He reminds the Hebrews, the Jewish community, of how their faith has protected them and has raised them and has given them the peace and the justice that they've wanted throughout history. But it, the, he also reminds them that faith and action are what brought forth the good things that were needed. Faith brought them out of Egypt. Faith brought Jericho to its knees. And Rabbah continues to live because of her faith. But all of these faiths also needed action behind them. Faith is the beginning, not an end. Faith is a reason to rise in the morning and at times to attempt the impossible. For nothing is impossible with faith. It is only by faith that things like justice for all people equally begins. Tyrants and dictators cannot stand in the way of conquering what is right when people of faith stand against them. It is by faith and faith alone that we face some of the most challenging moments in our lives. And it is by faith and hope that will bring us through moments that can tear us apart. Having faith can and will lead you to hope. Hope for a better future. Hope for a more meaningful impact on our town. And hope for better relationships with those you love. Hope can and will lead to a brighter future as long as you act and begin to work for that future. I believe that the reason why Jesus and Paul's teachings today and what they said to us today was to remind us that this work 
that we're engaging in can sometimes be extremely dangerous, it can be isolating, and it can be dividing. And it also can be just and peaceful. I believe that where there is no faith, there is no hope. And if we pull out hope in the light of God, there is only darkness and chaos left. See, if we're going to do this thing, if we're going to do this, if we're going to do this church thing, yep, if we're going to do it, then we need to do some things too. We need to get down on our knees and start to pray and ask God to help. We need to ask God to help us individually before we can rise up and help our community. There's some things that we need to unpack and put away. It's time to put them away. Jesus never worked in the past. Jesus always worked in the present. We too must work in the present. We need to reflect. We need to reflect upon what's important to this body. What's important to us as a people? And then we need to go to work, all of us. For the work of the church requires its full body to step forward in different ways. Let's leave today in this lesson with Paul's writing. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarded its shame, and, was ta and has taken his seat at the right hand. I'm going to start this last statement again. And has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. We don't worship and we don't pray to an empty being. God's here. Christ holds us and teaches us and the Holy Spirit guides us. Let us join our hearts and minds and bodies, of, and bodies in the work of God. May we gather our strength. Amen. Our next hymn will be I Come in Joy, number 420. Please stand as you are able.
We come to this table, many of us for many different reasons. What is your reason to come for this table? Is it to remember? Is it to party with God? Is it to be present with Christ? Is it the remembrance that the Holy Spirit provides you? Everyone comes for their own reasons. And no matter what your reason is, know that this is Christ's table. And at this table, all are welcome. So let us join our hearts and minds and sing the Lord's Prayer together, shall we? Christ table, not yours, not mine. It belongs to God. And as God's children, God invites us to this, to be part of the Trinity, to belong to something bigger than ourselves. And how spectacular is that? So know that you are welcome here. And God is so pleased to see your presence here and amongst us. Therefore, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we seek God's blessings upon these simple elements. Consecrate, therefore, this bread and this wine and make them more than they are today. When Jesus came to the last day, to his last night on the earth, he sat with his friends and disciples. And his teachings continued. First, Jesus took bread. And he broke it. And held it up. And maybe said, Something along the lines of, Heavenly Father, bless this bread that we have received from your good earth. Bless all the farmers that brought it to our table and everyone that took part in making it into this. And may it sustain us with life-giving force that we may go out and do your work. And he said to his disciples, this bread that is broken for you is a sign of the new covenant that has been given to you. Take and eat.
And likewise, after the meal was over, Jesus took a flask of new wine and he held it up and he blessed it. And he said, maybe something like this. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these grapes that came from your good earth and the seeds that you provided. We thank you for the miller that made the wine for us and for everyone's help that brought it to our table. And Lord, we thank you for this life-giving force that you placed before us. And he took the wine and he poured it and he passed it around. And he said to his disciples, take and drink for this is my blood that has been poured out for you in the sign of something coming forward. Take and drink. And would you please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving that's printed in your bulletin. God of all blessings, we thank you and praise you for calling us to your table. Through this holy communion, we have been strengthened and prepared to enter into the world in hope and faith for what comes next. You have made us one in the body of Christ and nourished us at your table with holy food and drink. Now send us forth to be your people in the world. Grant us strength to persevere in resisting evil as we proclaim the good word in all we say and do. Amen. God does give us so much to be thankful for. Every day, every week, God blesses us with the gifts that are coming forward to our hands. God doesn't tell us what to do with them, for he believes that in our, if our hearts and minds are right, we will know what to do with them. As Christians, we are called to give of our time and our talents and our treasures. All are needed, all are wanted, all are welcome. For that is what puts the community together. At this time, I ask our deacons, sorry, at this time, as you may be aware, we are not passing around the collection plate because of the COVID restrictions. So we ask you that if you haven't made your offering, to please feel free to rise during this time of music and place your offering in the back in the sanctuary. Thank you.
please join me in prayer. Gracious and holy God, we thank you. We thank you for teaching us to share with one another. We thank you for the gifts that you provided through our week. Lord, as we place these gifts before you to be used by our church, we ask that you endow our leadership with the wisdom of how best to use them to help your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. We come to my favorite time of service. The prayers of the people. It is the prayers of the people that tie us together as community. We sometimes forget that. I hold that this is one of the most sacred, wonderful gifts that God gives to us, is the gift of community. For it holds us when times are tough and sad, and we're grieving, and we're just trying to get through another minute. But that it also helps us to celebrate with one another when things are going well. At this time, I invite anyone that's sitting in the congregation, if you have a joy or a concern sitting on your heart, to please place it before the community. Bob, you got the mic, you can start. I'm waiting my turn. I just wanted to, uh, to expound on what Judy said. I really want, you know, that I'm gonna do the sermon next week, but I really want the rest of it to be about all of us, not me. Because if it's about me, we're all screwed. <coughs> I don't know how to respond to that one. <laughs> Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, yes, I'd like prayers for my friends Stan, I found out yesterday his wife Eva was dying of cancer. <sighs> Lord, hear our prayer. Yeah. She passed away last night. Oh, she did? Um, we returned safely from California, but my two, I have two things today. One is that while I was away, I saw a picture of the congregation all wearing hats in memory of Liz. And so I wore, I'm a hat person anyway, but I don't always wear it to church. So I'm wearing my hat today in memory of Liz and um, remembering. And the other, the other um, I guess it's a, a blessing. Um, yesterday, my dog, uh, pulled me off my feet and there was a guardian angel who caught me and I didn't actually hit the ground. This usually happens with a different result and yesterday I was saved. So, Prayers please for Jenny Northup and her family tomorrow as we celebrate Maynard's life. The word from North Carolina is that my friend Helen got through her valve replacement and triple bypass surgery. She is still in the ICU as an abundance of caution, but her daughter was able to post a picture of her mom lying in the hospital bed with a smile on her face and her thumbs up. So, and she thanks everyone for the prayers and the support. She feels it's done a wonderful, it's been a wonderful benefit and help. A very close friend of mine who lives in Michigan, Dale Rosine, is having um, 
valve replacement tomorrow, and I promised that I would ask you to keep him in. He's scared silly. He said, doctor's going to have that heart right outside my body and holding it. That's just so freaky, but thank you for your prayers. I'm sure you will. Okay. Hi. Just a couple of follow-ups on the um, Centennial, and it was great help from the Crossroads for and uh, friends for setup and cleanup. And Paul Maderos and his grandson with the Boy Scouts and, Gr and Girl Scouts had a great bunch of activities for everybody to enjoy. Another celebration was to see John Boniface come, Linda Mizziasek's dad, and Chris Thompson and his family and Dennis and Carol McKinstry. So it brought a lot of people out. Thank you. God is with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you on bended knee and with wounded hearts. As our friends and our family leave this earth and they return home, we are so happy for them, for they, we know there is no more pain. There is only love and peace. Lord, we need your presence here to carry those that are left as they go through the process of grieving, Lord, help them to feel your presence and know that you're there. Lord, we seek your help with those that are ill and those that are going need surgery. We ask you to stand with them and to hold their hands, to let them know that they're loved and that with the power that you give, there is the opportunity and the chance for recovery in life. Lord, we ask you to watch over our doctors and nurses that willingly and lovingly place themselves in harm's way every day, that use the knowledge and the skills that you gave them for good, for healing. And through their hands and their talents, we see your love and we thank you. Lord, we ask you to stand with all of those that are suffering with mental illness, homelessness, and addiction. Let them find peace. Let them find comfort where they can. Lord, but we also thank you for one another we thank you for the scouts. We thank you for the volunteers that stepped up and showed your light to a community in a world that may not want to hear it. We thank you for the courage to rise above ourselves and to rise into something greater. Lord, we ask you to guide all of our leaders to endow them with your wisdom and your strength to lead our world into a peaceful and loving situation. Lord, we ask you to watch over those that are in the Ukraine and in other parts of the world that are war-torn and having so many problems. May the day come when your kingdom shines brighter than shiny things here on this earth. Lord, but there's still much that sits on our hearts and minds today. Things that we may not have been able to give voice to. And in this holy silence, we ask you to read our hearts and minds. Amen. Our clothes, oops.
Our closing hymn this morning will be Lead On, O Eternal King, number 632. Please stand as you are able. Now, my brothers and sisters, as we depart from this sake and sacred space, my prayer for you is this. May the power of God shield and protect you through this week and allow your light to shine amongst the darkness. May the lessons that Jesus put before us guide our hearts and minds and all of our actions as we go forward. And may the power of the Holy Spirit alive in our hearts and minds to the possibilities of what can be. All of this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>